Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Bumbly Beach is a small theme park in between a nice neighborhood and unsurprisingly the beach. The residents of the quaint townhouses have easy access to a few nice rides and can hear the joyful laughter of children throughout the day. That is, until I came along. In my ruthless pursuit of profits I built more and more rides until eventually you couldn't even see the grass anymore. When I was done, 15 years later I had created the densest park ever built in Rollercoaster Tycoon 2. As you walk along the path to the park you hear the soothing sound of the ocean in one ear and the deafening cacophony of the park in the other. You enter the park by walking underneath a ferris wheel and then you find yourself with the choice. Which of the many different rides will you ride first? Will it be a merry-go-round or a roller coaster or one of 33 identical yet very unique motion simulators? Whichever you choose, it's very likely that you will get lost on the way there as the path system is not so easy to navigate. There are paths absolutely everywhere and it's a miracle that not more guests get lost in this park. Just the path system alone is already very dense and complicated. You would definitely need some kind of 3D map to be able to find everything, but we don't sell those here, so good luck. Via that path you can reach any of the 162 rides in the park. 28 of these are roller coasters and if you did it everything but those coasters it still looks very dense. From the tiny dueling micro corkscrews to the iconic Big Dipper and from the calm junior coaster to the fast paced twister coaster at the top of the park. What's interesting is that not a single roller coaster is yellow. I usually try to use all the colors pretty evenly, but yellow only appears once on the trim of this corkscrew coaster and nowhere else. I suppose this is because in the full park the path railings take up that yellow color space so you don't really notice the lack of yellow coasters. Roller coasters are vastly outnumbered by the much smaller flat rides though as there are 121 of those. 33 motion simulators, 18 space rings, 14 ferris wheels, 14 merry-go-rounds, 11 spiral slides and 31 other flat rides. As you may notice most of the space rings are built fairly high up. This is because the support limit for flat rides is really low and the space rings are the flat of the flat ride so you can build them up the highest. This makes them great for fitting them in everywhere, second only to the awesomeness that is the 2x2 not very tall motion simulator. Funnily enough these 121 flat rides don't look that dense which just shows you how much bigger roller coasters are. To manage the needs of the over 11,000 guests in the park surely we need a lot of stalls, right? Well, maybe or maybe not. There are a grand total of 6 food stalls, 6 drink stalls and 7 toilets in the park. This is all very funny from a meme perspective with imaginary endless lines for the bathroom and whatnot, but I'm more surprised that this is actually enough. There are 400 guests that need to go to the toilet but that's not that much for a park with 11,000 guests and there are only about 160 and 70 hungry and thirsty guests respectively. I suppose the incredibly high path density does help here a lot as stalls have infinite capacity. The one stall I did place a lot of is the cash machine of which there are 21 as I want guests to be able to spend their hard earned dollars as easily as possible. Speaking of money this park is highly profitable and makes more than 100,000 euros a month from ride tickets. Unfortunately the staff wages are 167,000 a month so we don't quite break even. Those 1500 furries are what attracts the guests to the park so we have no choice unfortunately. The ride with the most profit overall is double penetration with over 470,000 euros which is followed closely by triple penetration at over 450,000. Both are vertical drop coasters that are nearly invisible as they were built on or just above the ground very near the beginning. 
Their age, along with their high throughputs and great excitement ratings from having tracks go through their loops two and three times respectively is what makes them the top earners. The top spending guest is guest 284 who has spent over 1800 euros in the park and has ridden over 200 rides. Her favorite is Motion Simulator 25. I wonder what makes that one in particular better than the other 32. Because I'm a crazy scientist, this park also has a little social experiment running. Out here on the ocean, we have two guests who are trapped on one path tile with nothing to entertain them but a monorail playing candy style and an elephant. I wanted to see how long it takes them to go insane from this, but they are strong. Bench boy and bench girl have ridden the monorail over a thousand times and while they are very tired they are unfortunately still sane. At the start of the video I made the claim that this is the densest park ever built in Rollercoaster Tycoon 2 and while I obviously cannot definitively prove that no one ever built a denser park I can prove that this is the densest park I ever built. This is the fourth hyper dense park I have created. The first one was Electric Fields, all the way back in 2013. This is the original dense park and my introduction to optimized rollercoaster tycoon 2. In early 2021 I built this park, Overcrowded Forest Frontiers, which is a lot denser and the first time I built such a park live on Twitch. In the spring of 2022 I built my third hyperdense park in the form of Dangerously Dense Diamond Heights, which has an incredible 300 rides. Lastly, I built the park from this video in early 2023, which is just a few months ago. So which one of these is the densest? Let's take a look at how many rides they all have. Electric Fields has 122, Forest Frontiers has 194, Diamond Heights has 300 and Bumbly Beach has 162. It seems that Diamond Heights is the winner but that's not fair as it's also by far the largest at 5.7 hectares. The other three are all significantly smaller and Bumbly Beach is only a measly 2.2 hectares large. If we now translate this to the number of rides per hectare, it's Bumbly Beach that wins with 73. If we look at just the coasters, we can once again see that Bumbly Beach has the least with 28 and Diamond Heights has the most with 66. But converted to coaster density, we can see that Forest Frontiers wins this category with 14 roller coasters per hectare. As a comparison, Cedar Point, a real theme park famous for having a lot of roller coasters, only has 0.12 coasters per hectare. Lastly, there is the path network. Of course, Diamond Heights has the most path pieces with a massive 6,294, but per hectare it's a close battle between Forest Frontiers and Bumbly Beach. It seems to go between these two, as while Bumbly Beach has more rides and path, Forest Frontiers has more coasters. However, density has a third dimension, the vertical axis. The tallest roller coaster in Bumbly Beach is 69 meters tall, which is quite tall but still reasonable. Reasonable. Forest Frontiers, on the other hand, has a lot of extremely tall giga coasters, of which there are 6 over 100 meters tall and another 5 rides are over 70 meters tall. Remove these and now Bumbly Beach does have more coasters per hectare, making it denser than Forest Frontiers. Some of you may remember that last year I made a video about this park, a 22 by 22 square with 1000 rides in it. Even if we use the same cutoff height of 70 meters, it destroys all the other parks with over 1300 rides per hectare. And other people have built 1000 rides in even smaller parks, so you could do even better than this. The issue is, this isn't a park. This is an exercise in optimizing density which is great fun but it's not a proper theme park. The other four all have proper coasters, were built organically and have guests actually enjoying their time there. And that was Bustling Bumbly Beach, a 15 hour project that resulted in probably the densest park ever built in Rollercoaster Tycoon 2. If you want to learn more about the rival park that is almost denser than this one, click here to watch a video showcasing overcrowded forest frontiers. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.